light of the world You step down into darkness Open my eyes, let me see Beauty that made this heart adore you Hope of a life spent with you Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together wood, hey Lenora, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glories in heaven above. Hey, Sister Montgomery, humbly you came to the earth you created, all for love's sake became for Hey, Belinda. You're all together lovely You're all together worthy All together wonderful to me Here I am to worship Hey Phyllis Here I am to bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Yeah, I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon the cross. I'll never know. How much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. You never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. We'll never know how much. Upon that cross. So what I say is, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to. Weather's in the forecast, a, a process. To me, all together wonderful, all together worthy. Here I am. You came down. You ca came down from heaven and to, to save us. He's all together lovely. Hey, sister little. All together wonderful. Just all that and then some. We are so grateful. That he took the time to love on us and show us that we are loved. 
Amen. Amen. Yes, it is, Sister Montgomery. It's a beautiful song. Amen. We're grateful to you all who are here on this evening. We thank God for his presence and what he's done, been doing, and will is going to continue to do. Amen. And I thought that song kind of went with what uh, we're talking about tonight. You know, because he, we never know, like he said in the song, we never know how much it costs. We know what he went through. Well, we know, it, we know it cost him a lot, but we just can't put a dollar amount on it because it's priceless. For you to take the punishment for somebody else, for you to take the, 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 the penalty for somebody else, to pay somebody else debt that you didn't owe, you didn't do nothing to get, but you went through to save us, to save me, save you. And we don't want to give him glory. We don't want to give him no time. Mm. Okay then. Well, I'm going to keep on praising him and thanking him for what he's done. What he did for me way back then. How he kept me from hell. How he made sure I didn't go to hell. And I got to keep what he gave me, the opportunity he gave me, I got to hold on to it. You can't never get out of this, you can. There's a lot of folks thinking they gon' they can do whatever they want to do. As long as they gave the God their heart and the preacher their hand, they good. They solid. No matter what they do. No matter what's going on, they're they gonna make it to heaven. No, sir, no ma'am. You are not. If you can go to heaven just like you look. He owed the devil an apology, and the devil need to get back in heaven. So if the devil ain't coming back, you ain't going like you're going. So if you want to go to heaven, you're going to have to be holy. Don't be patting yourself after these folks. You, you better pattern yourself after God, because folks, 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 they get it twisted. They feel that they can do what they want to do and go to heaven. Sorry, not, not going to happen. Or oh, if I do a bunch of good works and I ain't living, you know, I just, God will see my words. But I'm still going to heaven, but he going to do it. No, ma'am. You're going to be in hell. Your works going to be, yeah, you're going you, yeah, you, yeah, you to still be alive. God ain't going to kill you off. You're just going to hell. You're not going to enjoy heaven because you didn't obey him. You don't get to heaven by half obeying. Have doing what you don't get to have them with no ma'am, no sir. Sorry, news flash. We got to do what all what God told us to do. It ain't about how I see it, it ain't about how they see it, it's about what God says about it. You do what you want to do if you want to. Thank God. Oh, well, see, God, God, okay, because He ain't said nothing. Okay, do you really want Him to get to the point where He does say something? Do you really want to get to the point where he says something to you and check you when you already know what you should and should not be doing? Do you really want to get there? Baby, see, while you're doing your mess, you better go on and get it clear while it's in the dark. Because, baby, when God exposes you, ooh, and see, you're going to hurt some folks when God exposes you if you ain't already hurt them now because they're looking at your mess. Mm. Ooh, where did that come from? Lord, where did that come from? Okay, Sister Hawthorne, how you doing, darling? Amen. We talking about proofs of the resurrection. That's that's I think that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Your life should be proof that he rose. Did, did you have a resurrection? Did your, your spirit man rise? Did God bring you back to where you need to be, hey, Mika? Huh? Did you have a resurrection? Where's your proof? Where's your evidence? Show me what you're working with. Do you really have the Holy Ghost like you're supposed to? Folks, throw that word around too. Throw that around. I got the Holy Ghost. I got a spad. Maybe that's the problem. You got a spad and not the Holy Ghost. Maybe you better check the spirit that you got. Because the spirit you got that don't line up with the word of God. Don't line up with God. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't planning to walk this tall tonight, but I'm walking. Y'all yeah, know I ain't scared of nothing nobody. I'm going to say what I got to say with God. Tell me to say, I'm going to say it. 
God put it on my heart. I'm sad. It is what it is. Told you. I don't I don't bite my tongue. I love you. I love you like I love you. And I will be raw and bring it to you on a platter. Mm -hmm. And let you know here it is. It's up to you to eat it. I'm not going to make you eat it. God ain't going to make you eat it. But he's going to present it to you. And let you know that you got to. You got to get it right. Because everybody thinks it's just a formality. You, you know, I just say I'm saved and I'm good. I'm saved and sanctified. And filled up. You ain't even living sanctified. You ain't doing right. You ain't, you ain't living like mess. Living in mess. And then telling folks about the Lord and what you need to do. About the, but no, mm -mm. How you going to leave folks if you ain't living right? Okay, let me go on back to the proofs of the resurrection. Luke 24, 36 through 53. God tired of God, God is tired. God is tired. Luke 24, 36 through 53. I did a part of this uh Sunday when I did my little moment speech. <laughs> my moment, my word that I did. I talked from Luke 24. But we're gonna be doing 36 through 53. Father, we thank you for this moment, we thank you for the Sunday school, God. I thank you for this day. God, thank you for how you blessed us so far into this week, God, how you blessed us so far into this year. God, we are very grateful to you, and we thank you. God, we thank you. I thank you for these our people who are here. God, I thank you for their very lives. God, bless them for their support. God, bless them just for showing up. God, you know what they need. You know what they desire. You know what's going on. You know everything, God. I ask that you touch, bless, set free, save, deliver, make whole. Whatever it is, God, you know. Do it according to the faith, God. Do it because I'm interceding for them, God, in Jesus' name. God, bless the ones I can see, the ones I can't see, the ones that will be on later, God. As we go through this lesson on tonight, open up our hearts, minds, and understand it, that we may receive your word and understand there's proof. In the resurrection, God help us to show what we what that show that we live in that we're living a holy life to you. God make us be infallible proofs. God know we're not perfect, but God we're living according to your word. And with you, we can do all things. We can be perfect in you. The devil is a lie that we can't be perfect. The God said in His word too many times that we can be perfect. We just need to line up and quit lying to folks. Line up with the word of God. God, I thank you. God, as I speak through this word on tonight, speak through these words of clay, the words that you would have me to say, let it be all of you and none of me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be settled on our sight, my Lord, strength and redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. <clears throat> Luke 24, 36 through 53. And as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto, unto them, Peace be unto you. He came in the middle of them and said, Peace be unto you. Jesus did knock on the door. He didn't say, Hey, y'all in them. He just stood in the midst of them because he could do that. He knew that they weren't going to answer the door because they were scared. But he finna, he's about to address that. He said, but, but they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. Now, this is the same. Come on, Sister Montgomery. Yes, Lord. This is the same man that they, they saw do miracles. This is the same man that appeared walking on the water. But don't you know when you get caught up in other stuff that ain't got nothing to do with Jesus, you're the same thing that delivered you, you'll be scared of. Oh my God, today. They saw Jesus walk on the water. He was able to walk on the water and come. To, but then now that Jesus stood in the midst of them, they got scared. Oh my God. You, you forgot what Jesus looked like? Is that what the problem is with people? They've forgotten what Jesus looked like. He's starting to look like folks. He's starting to look like things. He's starting to look like other places. We've forgotten what Jesus looks like. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Why are, you, why are your nerves bad? Why are you scared? 
Why are you running? You say you, you standing for me, but why are you scared? You say you want to preach the word. Why you can't preach the word? Are you living according to... Oh, that's it. I forgot what you said, Lord. Well, I heard what you said, but I wasn't paying attention. Because I feel that if I don't read that part, I won't be held accountable. But see, the part that you looking past, God see you looking past that part. Yeah, you still got to be held accountable for that. He said, why are you troubled? Why are you scared? Why are you, why, why are you shaking in your boots? He said, behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bone as ye see me have. I, it ain't, I'm not no ghost. Jesus transformed. Hey, glory to God. Transformed in the moment. Oh, glory to God. He came through the door. Spirit is transformed to the. Oh my God. So they could handle him. They can't handle a spirit. The hand would have went straight through him. But he was able to transform it to flesh and bone. He said, here, handle my hands. I'm, I'm not a spirit. Handle my feet. Look at my feet. I, I'm not. I'm not a spirit. You can touch me. I, I, I'm touchable. Here, here I am. See, you, you, you look at you. I'm not. I'm not a spirit. But they're looking at the fact that all of a sudden he appeared as a spirit, but became flesh, so they could handle him. Proof. <laughs> mm -hmm. Of the resurrection, he appeared. He came back. He said in three days. He came back. He, he came back to show them that I got up. I told you I was going to get up and now I'm here. I, I, I got up. That, that, that just in case you think it's somebody else that got up. And I'm just saying, here my hand, see. Here my feet, see. Touch me and handle me and see that I am who I said. I am, and when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye any meat? And they was like, Woo! Woo! And they was still going, Okay, Jesus, they were, oh, when, uh, woo, Jesus. Oh, okay, wait, wait. It's the, they still, they still not really sure. It's like, Wait a minute, I know. I know I do it with just Jesus. He good, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now last last time we Okay, so wait. Now he wants some meat. What'd he say? He wants some he said you want he said some got something to eat. We got some meat. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. And they gave him a piece of broad fish and of a honeycomb and he took it and did eat before them. So they're looking at this man that they know is Jesus. Say so he came back. He, he let us know he here. And he showed us his hand and his feet. And now he eating. And he said unto them. These are the words which I spake unto you. While I was yet with you. That all things must be fulfilled. Which was written in the law of Moses. And in the prophets and in the Psalms. Concerning me. I'm the fulfillment of the scripture. Everything that, I, that they said, the prophet said was going to happen, it happened. I couldn't, I couldn't stray away from the prophecy. I had to do exactly what the prophecy said. The prophets that God gave the word to had no idea, didn't meet him, didn't know, no, no. But they prophesied about Jesus coming. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Third day. The first day of the week, he was already gone. 
The third day was Sunday. I don't care which, how you try to fix it. The first day of the week is Sunday. The third day was Sunday. So you can come up with all oh, when he died. He died on Friday, Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That, he got up on Sunday. I don't, I don't even want, that ain't even an argument. That's what the word of God said. The first day of the week, the women went down and looked for him. He was gone. So all this discussion, all this trying to figure out where should we, we get hung up on dates and the formalities and foolishness. We lose the essence of the crucifixion. We lose the essence of the resurrection arguing about a day. And you on your way to hell arguing about a day. Ain't even trying to live for Christ arguing about a day. Just want something to argue about about a day. It don't matter what day. It don't matter what date to. I know that he got up on the first day of the week, which was the third day, and that day was Sunday. And our time now is not the time that it was back then. We have 24-hour days. They didn't have 24-hour days back then. See, if you study your history, you would know that. But anyway. We're so technical and we are so into the word and we so know nothing. Study your history and then word, put it with your word and then say, God, okay, I need to understand this. Because if you're just taking a word and trying to run with it and you don't have no understanding, you'll be dumb just like these disciples were. Mm. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. It was necessary. Oh my God. It was necessary that he went through what he went through. It was necessary for him to suffer what he suffered. It was necessary. For him to go through what he went through so that we could have a chance. So we could have a right to the tree of life. So we could be brought back to God. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Repentance and remission of sins. You've got to preach repentance and remission of sins. We preaching, but we ain't preaching repentance. We, we preaching, but we ain't talking about remission of sins. We preaching feel good messages. We not preaching you going to hell if you don't get it right. Because most time the ones preaching, they on their way to hell. And so they just trying to teach you enough to get you where you did. No, 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 no. Get your life right. Because if you, Paul said it good. I'm going to paraphrase. Paul said it. He said, woe is me if I teach you how to get to heaven and teach you the word of God and I find myself a castaway. A lot of preachers, a lot of ministers, a lot of folks out here teaching, trying to say the word of God and ain't living nothing on their way to hell. On your way to hell. As the old folks say, with gasoline draws on. I would get down on my knees right now. And say, God, oh, God, fix me. F fix me. Help me, God. Deliver me, God. Wash me. Purge me. Because I got too caught up. We don't talk about turning away. We talk about, you know, we compromise and we, well, okay, you know, we don't, there's God's perfect will and his permissive will. There's some things he will may allow, but you got to understand what he will allow. And then you got to understand what he really, what you got to do no matter what. But see, if you lean on his perfect will, you won't get caught up in the permissive will. Because see, sometimes we want to play with God. Oh, and it's okay, what well, God will permit. But when he was over in perfection, don't get caught in the permissive. You better stay in his perfect will. 
Because this is the one that's going to take you to hell. See, the devil will get you in that permissive way. Because, you know, God, done, you know, he ain't say. He said. He ain't mean. Well, you know. God said what he said. And he meant just what he said. We need to get back to the teaching repentance and remission of sins. Repentance. Not, I'm sorry, Lord. I ain't going to do it. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. God, I'm sorry. God, I messed up. God, I'm doing wrong. I, that, God, I don't even know. God, it's, mm, it's me, God. Standing in the, God, help me. I'm standing in the need of prayer. God, fix my heart. Wash me. God, I don't want to be messed up. I don't want to be caught up in other stuff. I don't want to be caught up in, in, in all that half, half stuff. I don't, I don't want to be caught up over there. I don't want to be tripping over nothing. I don't want to be tripping over folks. I don't want nobody tripping over me. Because everybody I call is a stumble. God going to get me for that. They not, he gonna not gonna get them for stumbling. Now he might okay sit there. But if I cause people to stumble, he gonna get me. It's a lot of folks out there gonna get it. Cause they causing a lot of folks to stumble. Cause they not doing what the words say do. They preaching one thing and living another. And woe unto you that people know you living wrong and you trying to preach that you living right. And you are witnesses of these things. You, you, you've seen you witnesses of this. And behold, I send you the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. I got that comfort I told you about. And he's ready to indwell. He's ready to come in. He's ready to be with you. He's ready to teach you. But I need you to go to Jerusalem. And tarry ye until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. What a, what a wonderful thing to be blessed by Jesus. No Pope, people be going around looking at the Pope. Oh, the Pope coming through. Oh, the Pope going to bless. Oh, the Pope. Oh, the Pope, the Pope, the Pope. But he didn't die for your sins. He's a fallible being. He's just like you. Why we put more stock in the creation than in the creator? Pope got to answer to God just like we got to answer to God. But he lift up his hands. And bless them. What a wonderful thing to be blessed by God. What a wonderful thing for God to lay his hands on you. What a wonderful thing to tell, tell, for God to tell you he's pleased with you. Proofs of the resurrection. We, are, we should be the proofs of the resurrection. Don't let God's dying be in, Jesus dying be in vain. He done allowed you the way to get back to him to be saved. And you like. I guess that's why we put him on the cross every Sunday. Because we keep killing him. Because we keep having him to go back to the cross every Sunday. In three days. He rose again. He already rose. Why we. Some folks say you ain't preached unless you put him in the grave and bought him out. I said, wait a minute. You mean no matter what the word I preach, I got to kill Jesus and put him in the tomb and bring him back out again? And on, and, what? I don't know where y'all get that from. That's, that's it, you know, they say you ain't preached. Baby. Some of y'all can't preach until you get there. And then you can't even, but anyway, that, mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> my God today. 
And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. Isn't it a wonderful thing where you can have an experience with the Lord? You know, we have, we have experiences at church, but I'm talking about that one-on-one -on -one time. It's an amazing thing to have gl the glory of God, His presence right there with you. It brings peace. It brings joy. It brings happiness. If you're not able to feel His presence, God, say, say, you need to ask God, God, why can't I feel your presence? What's blocking your presence from me? And we need to get out of emotions. We got too many emotional church folk. Because y'all think y'all connected with the spirit, but you, you just being emotional. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Are you feeling, are you really connected or are you just making some noise? I see people who just go through some formality. They feel in the song. And go right back to the devilment they were doing before. They go through the motion. And go right back to lying. They go through the motion. Go right back to the, to the whole monging and the whole way. But when you really make a connection with God and it and you cry out to him, there's some changing that's going on in the inside. If nothing is changing, what are you doing? If your situation don't change, what are you doing? If it seems like it's not getting better, what are you doing? Or what are you not doing? I tell people all the time, it's not enough just to pray, pray to God and ask or say, God, okay, give it to him. Cast all your cares because he cares for you. Why are you trying to carry stuff that ain't meant for you to carry? Why are you trying to carry people that's too heavy for you? Why are you trying to carry things that God said, I got it? You said Jesus take the wheel, let him drive. See, the problem is you say Jesus take the wheel, but you slide over the passenger seat. Get in the back seat so you can hush and watch. Because people in the back seat, unless you're back seat driving, God help you too. But people in the back seat, we ain't, we ain't thinking about the drive. We just, we know who's driving and know they're a good driver. We looking outside. We just. We enjoy the scenery because we know the driver got it. So if you say Jesus take the wheel, let him take the let him drive. Jesus, you know where you go. No, shut up and let him drive. Be quiet. Lord, I'm going to take a and be quiet. Shh. He know where he going. He know where you need to be. Proofs of the resurrection. Are you proof that he rose? Did he rise in you? Did he do a work in you? Did he bring you where you need to be? Did he get you where you need to be? Make sure you don't put don't make sure you don't get in God's way of blessing you. Make sure you don't get in God's way of delivering you. Practical points. If we think all of our doubts would be resolved if we could just see Jesus, look at the eleven. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I, if you, if Jesus, if you show up, I'll be all right. Jesus show up, you say, Lord, you come. Lord, I don't feel you. Lord, say I'm right here. But Lord, I don't feel you. It's not time for you to feel me yet. You just got to trust me and know I'm here. But God, if I don't feel you, I want to know. No, 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 no. You're not going to feel me until you need to feel. 
But I want you to know I'm right here. I can't see you. Quit trying to see. Become blind. Those that say they can see, they blind. Those that say I can't see, they can receive sight. Jesus shows incomparable patience in overcoming our doubts. He know we're going to be have we're going to get buried by some things. He know we're going to be like, "Oh Lord, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know." God, I who we Jesus. I I've been waiting all these years. I just Lord has been this and these people just get on my nerves. Oh, these children just acting crap. You got to trust him for real. Because he be, he, he be patient with us. He said they, they going to get it at the while. He said they hadn't put my, they full trust in me, but they going to get it. And Jesus is patient with us. When we get rattled by the seemingly unexpected, Jesus carefully reminds us of the mission. When we get rattled by stuff we don't expect. The pandemic, layoffs, sickness, children in jail, children on drugs, children having all kinds of problems, stuff is happening to your husband, stuff is happening to the wife, all kinds of stuff happens unexpectedly. But we got to be ready to go to Jesus. And how do you do that? You got to be always, you have to always be focused on Jesus when everything's good. Because when things get crazy, you're not gonna think of if you your mind ain't on him. On the, when the sun shining, you, he not gonna be automatic when the when the uh, when the storm come up. Cause you're gonna be calling folks, going here, going there, trying to figure out, trying to fix something. Mm -mm. But when your mind is already fixed on Jesus, because you've already praised him, hey, Sister Jefferson. When you've already been praised, already been lifting him up. When that storm come, you be like. Mm. Lord, you got that umbrella? Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Because you know he got it. I'm like, woo! Golly. Lord, you got that, right? Yep, I got it. Okay. The promise of the Father comes to those who obediently wait for it in faith. If you obediently wait for it in faith, the promise is coming. If God said you, I told you, I'm going to do it, he don't do it. But you have to be, have the patience to wait for him to do it. When we want it, don't mean it's a good time to get it. We think it's good right now. I need it right now, Lord, right now. See, I need it right now. Lord, know that if you get it right now, you ain't going to do right by it. God said, uh-uh, I'm going to wait till about three, more, three, four more years. But he ain't telling you, Jesus, you just going to wait the three, four more years. And then the three or four more years happen, you mature. You're more mature. You're solid. You got your mind straight. You got your business straight. And then here it comes. Lord, okay, thank you. Okay. Lord, if you had to bless me with this, ooh, back then, ooh, Lord, I know I would have messed this up. But God knows when to come through. Although Jesus is not physically with us now, we are continually surrounded by his presence and joy. He's not here physically. Say blessings unto you, paraphrasing. Bless, blessings unto you. Be glad that you can see me and believe. But blessings are those that have not seen me and yet believe. We believe, Jesus. We believe he came down here. We believe he died. We believe he rose again. We believe he's coming back. Because we're proofs of his resurrection. We're hating him. We're proof that he rose in us. When he rose from the grave, he had all power. Somebody said that earlier. All power in his hands. And how is it that you have Jesus on the inside and you don't have no power? Oh, I'm sorry. But you said receive power after that the Holy Ghost. Made. That's what you miss. 
the Holy Ghost comes in to keep you, to settle you, to teach you. You got to be willing to learn. You got to be willing to listen. You got to hear. But the Holy Ghost ain't going to never leave. Quench not the Holy Spirit. Quench not means that you can put him out. Ooh, mm, my Lord today. Because the Holy Ghost is not going to dwell in an unclean temple. You keep on putting trash in the temple. Keep on messing around and doing this and doing that. Then the Holy Ghost is going to leave it up. And I can't stay there. That house too nasty and they ain't trying to clean it up. I can't. So we have to work on ourselves. It's alright to follow who you follow. But make sure you know what you know. Make sure you study the word for yourself. Make sure you have a relationship with God yourself. Don't depend on nobody else. Because if somebody falls, you're going to fall with them. Because you're too busy looking at them. But you can look at them and say, okay. But you can say, God, okay, I see you. And you can follow God's example. So you continue to be proof that he rose. God bless you and God keep you. I hope I said something. I was, I was a little rough tonight, but it is what it is. You know, I don't, you know, you know me. But I hope I said something that will help you, that will strengthen you, that will help you do a self-examination. God, I thought I was where I need to be, but, but tonight, I don't know. So God, help me. Be who I need to be. Help my mind. Be where I need to be. Help my eyes, God, see what you need me to see. Help my mouth speak only what you need me to say. Bless you, Lenore. You're welcome, sweetheart. Sister Norfolk, thank you. Thank you, Sister Hawthorne. Amen. Sister Montgomery, thank you, love. Thank you, thank you. So y'all pray for me and I will pray for you. I will see you all next Tuesday. <clears throat> and don't forget those of you who join me on Sunday, I will be preaching in my church. So I'll be preaching that morning at uh, a Togetherness Worship Center where my pastor is Dr. Marcus Franklin. Also, um, Sunday, sorry, I'll be celebrating 35 years in the ministry. Woo! That's a long time. <laughs> but I thank God. It wasn't always easy. But God brought me through. Thank you, Sister Little. Y'all love, I love y'all. Ain't nothing you can do about it. And I hope you love me too. You tell me all the time. So I do believe you. But thank God for you and blessings upon each of you.